Ahoy, and welcome back to another playthrough of Nine Noir Lives. Why would I do? No, no, no. Well, they're speed. Can we chat? Friend, you have my membership card now. Come down here and talk to me like a normal cat. I don't personally want to use it, but... Would you like some oil in your tub? That's a terrible idea, friend. The oil floats on the surface and makes everything slippery. Hey, do me, do me a favor. Can you scoop some of your bath water into this cup? Why? Do you want to <clears throat> drink it? What? No, that's gross. I, uh, well, <laughs> how come I feel self-conscious and weird? <sighs> Forget it. Guess you're mine now. If I ever go crazy, start enjoying baths. Would a bubble bath relax you? Oh, I love nothing as much as dozing off in a foamy tub. <laughs> hmm. Would a bubble bath relax you? Oh, I love nothing as much as dozing off in a foamy tub. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, my stuff needs to go in the locker, or Mr. Smarmy Kitty will yell at me. In you go, item friends. I feel ridiculous.
open this up there. If you're not Edgar's locker key, I'll leave my towel. Hooks on perfectly. Great. Now all I need to do is pull. Feels much better. Let me grab my things. No metal detectors on your piping, Celestine. Oh, tsk, tsk. Well, that was a bit of a journey, but now I've got Edgar's locker key. Did you go to such lengths to stash in here, Edgar? A photograph of... Oh, cucumbers. Is that Mousezilla dealing drugs? It can't be. Oh, Pepe was right. I don't believe it. Edgar thought this was important enough to hide here and then die. Was someone looking for this? Why? Yet another piece of evidence tying Edgar to the drug underworld, though. A photograph of a Mousezilla-shaped figure doing what must be a drug deal. Something tells me I'd get a face full of claw if I tried that. Very perceptif, Satan. I'm back. <laughs> Re bonjour. You didn't mention before that your surname is Catulet. Her gaze did not falter, but she lifted her head a little, giving her an arch look. Mm, should I have, Satan? I must have missed the memo. Perhaps I can get a bandana to wear with my name on it. Scarlet Evangeline Catulet. Would be quite fetching. Little flowers braided in. I wasn't trying to be funny. That is good. Dressing correctly is no laughing matter. Do you mind? This is serious. Oh, I was led to believe you are a fan of comedy, Chaton. Am I not what you expected? I can be more like a Montagnu, if you like. Grrr, grrr, threats on your life, looming presence. Gah! Yes, I know what Bartholomew is like, but I'm here to discuss you, not him. Could have fooled me, Chaton. But if you wanted my signature, you should have just said. And if I wanted Nip? I can probably manage a nibble. 
a nibble of some nip. Oh, very clever. Yes, I see what you did there, Lieutenant Segway. Of course, nip is inhaled, not eaten, but it's fine. Point for trying. I wouldn't know. I've never tried it. Mm, believe me, that's painfully clear. You're standing there like someone shoved Oscar's supporting stick up the back of your shirt. A little nip would help you relax, Chaton. Give you um, some perspective. You're intimately familiar with the drug, naturally. I'm an actor, Chaton. We do not demonize everything in life that can bring people joy. Unlike your profession, people in mine embrace life and everything it has to offer. Nip is not evil, Chaton. Nip is a gift. Or, if you prefer, a formal approach. A tool. You're projecting an exceptionally relaxed attitude. Does that casualness extend to your personal security? You were remarkably easy to reach for a crime boss. A crime boss? Oh, but that does sound grand. Ordering the crime around. Go there, crime. Climb that tree. Wave at all the people. Is that what crime bosses do? You tell me. She shrugged carelessly, blinking slowly at me under long eyelashes. <laughs> it is you who named me such chaton. I am a theater owner. Everything in La Boule de Poil is above board. I do not need guards and fences. Besides. Even if I was the sort of person you claim, I would not lean towards bombast and threats like the Montagnes. I am standards. Say whatever you like. My source was clear. You run the Meow Meow Furrington drug trade. But I can tell that's not something that matters to you. You're toying with me like you toy with the lives of everyone in Meow Meow Furrington. You don't see cats. You see targets. Where would the city be today if it wasn't constantly fighting you off like an infection? How many lives has your nip ruined? Your source. Hmm. Does he wear a smart suit and growl a lot? She dismissed the rest of what I said with a flick of her hair. And you make that word sound so substantial. Ruined. I must have missed that headline. Nipbag breaks into Cat's house and forces itself down his nose. No, Chaton. Nip doesn't ruin anything. Cats are quite capable of ruining their own lives. They'll simply pick the most fun way of getting there. If I was involved with Nip, I would just take advantage of that fact. Uh, of course. It's not your fault that you choose to make Nip available. Not your fault you get people addicted to it. And I guess it's not your fault Edgar Montemu died either. He ruined his own life by your reasoning. I think she would have looked less shocked if I'd stabbed her without warning. The apparent honesty of that response almost had me writing her off there and then. But she was an actor. If you think my demeanor gives you license to accuse me of heinous acts, you have made a very big error in judgment. I don't surround myself with tactless crushers like that Tinkle Thug Barty employs, but I have my people. We aren't done here. I disagree. You are fun for a bit, Chaton, but if you don't want your face to meet some very large feet, you should leave. I think you'll find this photo interesting. I know I did. She barely glanced at the photo. I do not care about the big mice. Did I not warn you about leaving, Chaton? It will be a shame to flatten that pretty face. But in the acting business, one cannot make empty threats. <laughs> oh, more threats. Delicious. Let me add it to the pile. I'm accumulating quite a collection lately, it would seem. Are those fangs all of a sudden, Chaton? So shiny. Did Bartholomew tell you to show them to me if I didn't melt in the face of his lap cat's words? <laughs> Bartholomew didn't send me. I thought you only told the odd fib, Chaton. Yet here you are, spouting enormous, juicy falsehoods. Okay, look. 
This isn't an excuse, but I was tired, frustrated. I felt like I had been solving everyone's problems except my own. Getting the runaround from Scarlet wasn't doing anything to help the situation. It wasn't a smart move, but I was so sure. Fine. Do I need to be the one to lay it out? Then gladly. All the hard evidence in this case points to a drug connection. Nip on Edgar's body. Fluff seeds on his clothing. He has a photo of a drug deal hidden away. When his best friend dies of an overdose, he's so angry that he finds the dealer and threatens his life. And then, poof, he vanishes for months. Nobody sees him around. Nobody hears from him. What, is he mourning for his friend or doing something else? Out of the blue, he turns up again at his father's club, chipper as can be. Everyone says he seemed really upbeat, like something good has happened. Someone claims to see him chatting to a large, mysterious type. Very large. I bet he has really big feet. Edgar doesn't stay long at the Nitty Kitty. He leaves, and he goes to the establishment for the first time ever. She looked shocked. I felt sure I had her. He pressed my advantage. He tells Celestine he has a meeting, but he leaves almost as soon as he arrives, leaving only this photo in his secure locker. One of the safest locations in the city, as I'm sure he knew. He goes back to the Nitty Kitty, apparently accompanied by the big cat from earlier, arguing, what about? Well, a few hours later, he's dead, with a nip bag in his paw, so probably not about which flavor of tea is best. Okay, here's what I think, Scarlet. Edgar was upset and angry about what Nip did to his friend, except he finds out his friend was off Nip by then and had moved to Fluff. But nobody knows who's making that, right? Well, Edgar did. He had Fluff seeds on his body, not Fluff itself. Those months he vanished, I think he used them to trace the people making Fluff. I think he found out where it's being made, and I don't think you could let that information get out. I think the nip on his body was just a bold red herring from you. You see, Scarlet, I think Fluff is yours. What, uh, what do marketing people call it? Hmm? Marketing segmentation. Nip is entry level, right? And Fluff, that's the upgrade. Keep supply low and make it seem exclusive. Charge ten times the price. You don't tolerate competition, naturally, except from yourself. Who was Edgar going to meet at the establishment? I wonder. Someone with the power to take you down, if they had the truth? Was that your thug at the Nitty Kitty that night? Trying to convince him not to do something stupid? And when he didn't listen, oh, you rolled out the big guns. The photo is the key. Mousezilla selling drugs in a secret location. Mousezilla who doesn't exist, who can't exist unless he does. You made him in a lab. Just like Pepe said, you are the thems, and he is the terrible enforcer of your monstrous whims. He sells your fluff and silences anyone that tries to stop you. When you found out that Edgar had exposed you, Mousezilla killed him for you, Jacques! I paused, panting a little, but... Satisfied, I was more certain of everything I'd just said than I'd been of anything in my life. She was silent as death for a moment, which was enough time for my brain to remind me that I'd just accused a crime lord of murder, with nothing but four walls and a die recorder to witness what might happen next. These accusations, the biggest pile of cucumber slices I've heard in my life, and you, the craven insult, he sent a buffoon, a clown, to mock me. Does he think I do not see? Does he imagine this will go unanswered? What? Uh, who? Bartholomew! You and he have met many times since the murder. I know. You speak in his voice. Le Fatouche! He pulls your strings, and you lie on command. You're his errant cat now, sent to deliver an ultimatum, and it does not matter what I say, because he has already judged me. Her response caught me off balance, I won't lie. She was ignoring everything I'd said and focusing on Bartholomew. 
She could have been deflecting, but there was an honesty to her passion that was undeniable, even if she was totally wrong. I told you I don't work for him. Lies. You stink of him. Collect your cards, Poupette, and scuttle home. Tell that despicable cat that it is time for him to pay for what he did and what he made me do. There's no longer room for both of us in the Miami of Thurrington. Le grief de la carte sans sortie. I don't speak Absalom, but the fury in her voice made the intent clear. Hey, now, hang on. Uh, okay, just wait. Nobody needs to start any wars over this. I, 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 I'm not here on behalf of Bartholomew, all right? We didn't meet. He forced his way into my office and he threatened me. And, 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 and I stood up to him, I'll have you know, despite the declawing machine. More lies. He manipulates and you says he thinks I killed Edgar and he sent you to... He, he doesn't. What? He refused to believe it. He didn't even entertain the option that you did it. But I, I'm not blinded by whatever history you two share. I think the evidence speaks for itself. And I think it implicates you. You truly think I make fluff? I loathe fluff, Chaton. It is bad for business, bad for cats, and bad for the city. Yes. The great addicts will buy anything they can get their hands on at any price. But that is not sustainable. There's too few of them. I want the tired house cats, the busy executives, the cats who just want something to make a day a little shorter. They're not addicts. They just need a pick-me-up sometimes when the coffee isn't working anymore. What could be more normal? Those are the sort of cats that will get scared and stop buying if they hear there's something that's hurting people. And word is starting to spread. That's not enough to make me believe you or trust you. I do not trust you either, Chaton. You are unknown. You can be manipulated, and I do not trust Bartholomew. He is a manipulator. He will make you believe what he wants. I know he will, and I think he already has. And, and yet, the evidence is stacked against you, not him. The evidence you have. What does that mean? Edgar was supposed to meet me at the establishment on the night he died. He said he had something to show me. But he never arrived. Or so I thought. You were in contact with Edgar for how long? D did Bartholomew know? Why? I, I mean, you could have mentioned this sooner. Do you now believe that I did not kill him? I, I, well, you realize I, I can't just take you at your word. And yet your word is sufficient to indict me? We have a problem, Chaton. Mutual distrust. You think I'm involved in this? And I don't trust that you're not working for Bartel, an impact. But I have the solution. Bartholomew inadvertently has proof of my innocence in the safe in his office. Go and find it. Oh, in his safe. Yeah, you want me to break into Bartholomew's office, the one in his club? Don't be ridiculous, Scarlet. I'm not a criminal. Oh, you have been busy, Chaton. My people have asked around the places you have been. You are nearly as subtle as you may think. Arson at the establishment? Uh, that wasn't arson. The blanket lied to me. It said inflammable. Cake fraud? It's not fraud if you're helping a friend. Poisoning a police officer? Okay, look, it'll be fine. I needed to get fuzzball away from the body, and honestly, if you knew Krakowski, you'd probably agree that what I did was... Stealing evidence, lying about historical artifacts, licking things. Ha! Ah, actually, uh, licking things isn't a crime. I checked. Regardless, I know how your kind operates, Chaton. You draw a line in the sand and say, oh, this is us, and that is you, good and bad. And when the water comes and washes the line away, you redraw it, but closer this time, again and again. And by the end, we stand face to face. But you still claim that you are not us. I don't break rules just to make money and gather power. I do it to help people. I am not like you. And I am not who you say I am. You have no idea what you are saying. And I will not let you soil my name with these lies. Go to Bartholomew's office. Take a careful look at the items you will find in his safe. That will prove my innocence. Oh, if I'm really working with Bartholomew, couldn't he just tell me what's in there? Never. The items in there are his most treasured possessions. 
the last artifacts of his old life. He would never tell anyone what they are, let alone allow you to touch them. <laughs> Convenient, but still. Even if I had it in my head to indulge you, it's impossible. Tinkle would see me instantly, and I'd have no way of activating the elevator to Bartholomew's office. Au contraire, the club is deserted. Edgar's funeral is tonight. You will be able to move freely. As for the elevator... I have had this for a while. Just in case I ever needed to leave a personal message in his office. You may use it to poke around as you wish. But I remind you, I'm giving you this to prove my innocence, first and foremost. I have nothing more to say to you now. Find evidence of my innocence in Bartholomew's safe. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.